over the last 10 years, another target outside the brain, but still in the central nervous systems that's been applied, invasive and non-invasive stimulation is, is the spinal cord. And actually, the idea started with monkeys and, and rats, where they, they investigated the fact of invasive stimulation of the spinal cord uh, on the gate in these models of Parkinsonian and rats and monkeys. And they found that after internal stimulation, uh, they could, you know, improve the, the speed of the gait and the bradykinesia in all the, 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 the four limbs. And then uh, maybe seven or eight years ago, human studies started to see whether this could be translated to human science. And, you know, to date, maybe there are 15 or 16 studies, clinical trials, analyzing the effect of invasive stimulation over the thoracic spinal level. And there are many positive data showing that, yes, in patients with PD, that the gait is the most bothersome symptoms or, you know, the velocity, the, the stride length, or the turn or freezing of the gait. When you turn on the stimulation, this patient can improve many gait parameters. And that's amazing once we still a bit, you know, uh, there's few options to put problems in PD, even medications or levodopa or deep brain stimulation. You know, they are less predictable over time in these patients. Usually this is a kind of a problem in your clinical practice, the, the gait or the unsteadiness or, you know, the instability. So uh, the spinal cord opens a new possibility, a new target to maybe try to solve, at least in part, this kind of problem that's gait issues. And in, in Movement Disorders Congress, we presented a preliminary data on no invasive spinal cord stimulation. That, that's we published last year uh, for the first time this approach in PD, analyzing the effect of the, the TMS. We applied the coil over the thoracic level in five patients where the gait was the most bothersome symptoms, uh, including freezing of the gait. And we found in this pilot trial that after simulation, the patients improved the, the ability to walk uh, independently and with less freezing of the gait and better turning. And this opened the, the possibility to run a phase two trial, that's ongoing trial that we hope to finish up to, 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 to December in this year. So this is a new approach that you, you maybe you can act in the spinal cord, but you can change a normal brain activity. And that, that's the idea. That's the, the, the rational. Uh, you can, you know, you can reset or you can break abnormal electrophysiological findings in the cortical and the subcortical loop in these patients. And maybe you can, you know, try to, to, to reestablish this activity. This has been shown previously in animals, and now we are going to, to study this in humans. So it's a local, but also remote effect of the stimulation. That's our, our idea.